doing good. I was just watching your stream. Mm -hmm. I'm sharing my screen on the Discord yeah. so you can see it without any delay. Okay. Yeah. yeah I see. But yeah, tell me about yourself. Where are you from? What do you usually play? What's your rank? Blah blah blah. Whatever. Tell tell me anything uh, else you want. From America, mm -hmm. it's California, so the West Coast. So it's two p.m., two forty-two p.m. Okay. I started this game maybe three weeks ago, and uh, I've only played one deck since I started. And it's gonna it's gonna sound weird, but I've only played Endure, like before Endure popped off. It wasn't really meta back then. Oh, because really? It's super popular. Yeah, it's super popular now. And I'm kind of happy it's popular, even though I know a lot of people don't like it. Because it's everywhere. But yeah, so... Because of this whole meta shift, Endure popping off, I played rank. I used to only play normals until like a week ago. And then I started playing ranked like one week ago. So I went from iron to diamond right now. And I'm just kind of stuck in diamond, and I don't know what else I should do to play better. I... Diamond four. Yeah, I made it to diamond three, but then I started using a different deck because I kept running into Sejuani plunders and other stuff, and I was like, "What could counter this?" So I tried Noxus Burn, but I just suck at that. Okay, one question. Back, back to it. Yeah. What is your main? objective at the moment is it generally improve at the game and improve gameplay improve logistics and everything or is it or is your main objective currently get to masters like get higher rank probably get to masters but i want to improve on this one deck since it's pretty much i've only played endure so i don't even know like any other decks or how to play any other decks Okay, 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 I get you. Mm, like, if we're talking about laddering and just getting to Masters before the end of the season, then you should definitely not switch decks. Because if you're playing majority of the time one deck, and you were doing okay with it, and you don't really play as much of other decks, then you should stay with that one deck as long as it's working okay. And as long as you don't hate the deck, like if you hate the deck and don't have fun playing it, you will not have a good time, even if you're sort of winning a little bit more than losing. So I would definitely recommend <laughs> that you keep on playing a bit of Endure if you really want to ladder. But yeah. if you would want to generally improve at the game, like I would definitely suggest playing a bit of a variety of decks. Like if you play a bit of different decks, you will understand a little bit how they work. So you will basically understand how to work against them, how to play against that matchup. Um, which version of Daehu Endure do you have? Can you send me your list? Yeah, sure. Okay. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Copy and paste. That's right, with Callista. Yeah, it's pretty tempo-y. One Butcher. One Omen Clock? Why? Uh, most of the time, Omen Hawk hits like useless cards like Keeper or some other stuff. I don't. So why do you so have just... her at all? Why do you not have three Aristocrats then? If it uh, sometimes hits wrong cards. Because it also hits right cards sometimes, and it feels so nice when I get a, a, a Callista or at least. But it's just not consistent enough that I want to have all three or want to have like Two. three happens. Oh, okay. Hmm. So I just, I'm just playing with the ratios a bit. It's like my Haunted Relic, it's also the same. I have one because I tried it with two and sometimes I just get completely brick hands with no Callista, so. Okay, I'm okay. Uh, I, I'm okay. I'm sort of okay with one Relic. Um, that's well, fine. I just played this deck a lot and that's just what I found to be the most consistent, I guess. But I don't know if it's good or not. It's just what I... I mean, it's sort of... I sort I sort of understand the mentality of all of these, like one butcher and one Norman hawk, two aristocrats, just to lower your chance of having a brick hand. So at any point of time, like it goes like, <laughs> thank you, better host. Um, I'm coaching some sorta. Of. 
focused more on the personal coaching, but really appreciate it. So yeah, sorry. Um, but it still sort of slowly bothers me that you have one butcher, woman, woman hook, one relic. Yeah. It's a little weird, but uh, I know. Okay, okay. Um, okay, I mean, I'm not going to say anything. Like, I totally understand the logic and should be fine. Um, I was playing around with Endure as well. So I made my own version with it, but with the Fearsomes. Miss Wraith and Wraith Caller. Yeah, that's the one I used to run. And, and then I stopped running it when they nerfed Brood Awake. And I just completely took it out for a more aggro. Okay, okay. Yeah, I totally understand. But what do you mean more aggro? Like, more early game focused with, like, chump blockers and stuff like that instead of fearsome. I attack. mean, the aristocrat is a chump blocker, the keeper plus butcher is a blocker, and caretaker is a blocker as well, and the spider from Wild Feast is a blocker. Uh, I don't know, I have sentries for more, like, draw and then just board control and presence. Okay, sentry, board. sentry I totally agree with. Um, I was just trying out my own deck with... It's very confusing because it has raza double possession so people will get confused and uh, but somehow i've been doing okay with it and i had really fun with it but they like i, I just didn't feel like playing the normal version because it just yeah, it's, it's a flexible deck you can yeah i get you it. but it's a drake with you right now i feel like it's uh at a really good spot but i don't understand why misfortune sejuani was one of the most played and whenever I would play it, I had literally no issues playing versus uh, Daekwondoor. Oh. <laughs> Daekwondoor versus Daekwondoor? Yeah, it's a mirror. Huh? I normally don't face mirrors. I pretty much only face Misfortune and Sejuani hmm. decks. What here do you keep? What, what, do, what would you discard here? I would probably discard the Glimpse Beyond... I would discard everything except Elise, I think. I mean, Elise is a great turn to play, but why would you discard all three? I, the Glimpse, I want something faster. Same with the Bark Beast. It feels weird to put it on one. If they put like an Omen Hawk, then you can't really put Bark Beast and it feels bad to block. Same with the Sentry. You already have a turn two play with Elise that I think is just better. Okay. So... So I totally agree with the fact that you don't want to keep Bark Beast if you can get another one drop. Yeah, I'm yeah, sort of nice. fine with that. Um, removing Sentry if you have a lease, I definitely agree with. But I do not uh, agree with removing Glimpse though. Uh, whenever I played Deku and Dior, um, Glimpse is something that just gives too much value. In my opinion, it's such a deck that whenever I I never I never feel like Glimpse is something that should be mulliganed. As long as you play have literally anything that you can play on your turn one or two or something. And since we do have a lease already, we have our turn to play. And Glimpse just gives you too much value in a deck with your deck, in my opinion. So I feel like keeping Glimpse is something that you actually want to do at deck with your. I played. Something like 300 games with Daekwondoor when the game was like in early stages of beta. And my Daekwondoor won the Duels of Frontera tournament. And I always felt like keeping clips is something that I do want to do. Would you play Coral Exorcization here or do not do that? I would not. Why? I'm just always scared that they'll kill my Elise. Or something what happened to it so i just have a second release in hand okay that's reasonable but what what are we playing next then if we do not play this um like turn three we'll I have just pass. we just pass but he would be attacked with elise with omen hawk and with another one one the thing why i felt like playing this is correct here is just because it feels potentially awkward for him to attack with the Omen Hawk, just because we have chum blockers for it. So he only wants to attack with Elise here, because Elise is guaranteed to do damage. If he, if we would not have these two, if we would not have these two, he would 
pre attack with the Omen Hold because our Elise only has one blocker here. So I felt like doing this might be the correct play. As well as the fact that like playing this battlings is correct because when we develop Bark Beast, we yeah, still are left sure. two mana to glimpse. If he wants to Wild Feast our Bark Beast, we can still glimpse one of these two units. And it also creates a position like this that he actually doesn't want to attack. Because if he attacks with Aristocrat or at least whatever, it kills. We just block with a spelling. We're fine with that. And then we get the Bark Beast to a 3 3. And it feels really awkward for him. So, this is why I actually played the Bird Awakening and I felt like it's the correct play. Because you have to think about your next turn. Makes sense. The problem now is if we could play Glimpse, he can have Alfeast. It puts us at a, at a terrible spot. The only consideration is Butcher. And I think I would Butcher. And I feel like, yeah. Because we. Playing Butcher here makes next turn feel more awkward for him because our open attack here puts more pressure because he cannot defend versus Elise and the 3-3 three, three trades per, trades of good into anything. Um, so what he's going to do here is lose the Omen Hawk to the Bark Beast and that's pretty much it. And the 1-1 one, one he might block with the Aristocrat so if we attack with the 3 2, um, it would change his defending way. So he potentially would defend the Spadling with the Elise and the 2 2 versus our 3 2. So he might not defend the Spadling because he might think we have Alfeast. But I do yeah. not want to bluff it. I want to play it safe. And I'm just going to do this. I could have put the Spadl out of Spadling as well. But I don't know if pushing one damage and playing a little bit unsafe is really worth it. Like when we are trying to really ladder and like really focus on um, getting that rank, I feel like playing it safe is definitely much more worth it than just pushing for something that might get us a bit of value, but a big chance that it might give us nothing. Second glimpse, okay. Okay, this is hilarious. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be one of these games. Oh, this is gonna be hilarious, dude. <laughs> it feels awkward she for both. <laughs> this is gonna be so stupid. <laughs> he doesn't even attack. This is so stupid. Okay. Uh, what do you do? Uh, attack with the Elise because he can't block with anything. Okay. And then... I think I would sentry too. Because it gets the draw. He's going to block it with a spider. Mm -hmm. Maybe I get rid of one more spider for some board space, but... I think I have to keep the other 3-2s. If I attack with the 3-2, I would have to attack with both or none. Because he could block with hapless. That's true. Um, so and I, I feel like just... at our current position, I feel like attacking with both is the correct play. Um, All right. Do you know why I feel that way? Because he would have to block with the least, right? And then that would kill it. And he would feel bad. I mean, basically, what's gonna happen is he's gonna kill one of them with the help of Aristocrat, but the other one he's basically not gonna de defend with. And we're pushing 5 damage, which is pretty solid here. But the more important thing that you have to understand here that he might use a spell to kill one of them. Oh. Like that? Like, for example, this. He either must use a spell to kill one of our units, or. The second possibility is that if we do not push for damage, he might just jump block all of our units, and then he could maybe have a second collector. And if he has a second collector, and keeping him his units alive is going to be a big issue. Yeah. Free glimpse, though. Yeah, this is solid. 
So that's why I felt like pushing for damage is most likely a really good play here. It's a muddy draw too. Yeah, we got Kete Keeper with Caretaker, which is pretty solid. But we might not want to play it, depending on what he plays. This is so stupid, man. Yeah. Interesting mirror. This mirror is so stupid, to be honest. <sighs> Deck Hunter is 9-9. Which is pretty solid. But unless we have a second one, I do not recommend playing it. Unless, like, your open attack can kill him. And I don't feel like uh, this is big enough. Uh, what do you feel like playing here? Probably sentry, just to set up a block in case he open attacks. True, but we do okay. have 7 mana. So I feel like Curse Keeper is the correct play here. Because if we play sentry, he can just well feast it on the start. Um, I think I would still play Sentry like, after the Curse Keeper. We're, yeah, like we're that. playing both no matter what, in my opinion. Yeah. So I feel like playing Keeper is the correct play first. Hmm, not bad. Imagine that he plays Cloista now, that would be hilarious, bro. <laughs> or Deku Endure into Deku Endure. <laughs> this is gonna be so stupid. I wasn't really counting. I don't know how big his is. Yeah, I don't know either. I feel like it's something similar though. Everyone's Caretaker. What do we do? Ooh. Uh... Maybe nothing. Or you use your own caretaker, but using it defensively kind of weird. Not just that. If we use it, th this is three units. It's one caretaker and double sapling. So if we kill the keeper, the abomination will just die. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Need... So we cannot yeah. play it. Nope. Keeper does nothing. Deju Endure doesn't really help too much. Yeah. But I'm actually, Calista. I'm actually considering Callista because... Here he has to pull the Bark Beast and Sentry or this. I feel like Kalista might be okay here, to be honest. He has Vile Feast though, right? We do have Glimpse. And I feel like if we have another unit dying here, attacking, like playing Deku and Dior next turn and trying to attack and kill him could be the correct play. He has to use... He has only three cards, so if he does have Alfeast, he has to spend it to kill Callista, and we do have Glimpse to deny it, so I feel like it's the correct play. That's why. I might not be 100% correct, but I think it is good. Okay, what do you do? I would just block the 2-1 with the sentry. Okay. That's Maybe... It. Maybe the 1-1 one, one Spiderling? Because I don't think he can threaten 3 damage unless he has Sec Callista, but yeah. I think that's... There's no way he can threaten it unless he has 2 Callistas in hand. So he can Black Spear. I feel like not doing this is better because if he has Grasp, our Collector dies. And taking 1 damage isn't a big of a deal compared to Collector potentially dying. So I don't feel like Defending versus Spiling is worth it because it opens up Collector dying to a, vol uh, a Grasp. Oh, another one. We have a, such a weird hand. Dude, this is so retarded. 13, 13. Caretaker, okay. <laughs> okay, do you do something? No, because if you blighted, next turn you get the Callista level up. It's pretty. It does give us Callista level up this turn as well if we do it now. But we don't have a second Callista, so I don't think we do it. Hmm. The thing is, he loses the same amount of mana as we do, but he has less cards than we do. If he vials it, we could just glimpse the 1 1 and then level it up anyways. 
true. And then we still have the second Curse Keeper into the second Blighted, so... It's true, it's definitely true, but I feel like it's... This is the correct play. I'm gonna tell you why. So, if we pass, he might just pass back, and that's the end of the turn. Yes. If we do this, what we did just now, he has only three cards, so as long as we... If we play something... Alright, let's see what he had. He had only Glimpse. We don't have Alfie, so we let that pass. I feel like this is definitely the correct play, because it kills two more units. So basically at the start of the next turn, Daeklander is going to be 14-14. So we just play her, attack, and we're threatening to kill him. Uh, or sense. kill his own Daeklander. So I feel like our Daeklander is going to be bigger than his because of the saplings that are dying and because we played Caretaker, because it's pretty much plus 3-3. Three, three. So I feel like playing Caretaker is worth it here because our Daeklander will be either bigger than his if we play it. Or he's gonna have an awkward time. And the Wild Feast. This is pretty obvious, right? It denies one healing, it denies one trump blocker, draws us two cards. Glimpse and Wild Feast are the two cards. Oh my god. Oh, oh my, my god. <laughs> yeah. Now yeah, you just open and do. A hundred percent open and do. Have to. This is this is toxic. That Lethal, right? Did you see why I play Caretaker though? Because it also gives yeah. us it give one, it gives us damage to his face. Two, it buffs a Daquin Dior. And three, it doesn't let him pass to end the turn. It makes him needing to respond. And he actually responded with that with the glimpse of Alfeast. He might not have done that if we played nothing there. So I felt like that was definitely the correct play. And now we just put him in an awkward spot that he probably can respond as the... I think he's gonna surrender. Mm, maybe. If he Valfeast, you Glimpse, and if he Glimpse, you try Valfeast, pretty much. So Valfeast and Glimpse is something you never want to play actively. You only want to play it pr proactively, like you in response. Now this is amazing. The best yeah. he can do is plus 4-4. Four, four. Yeah. It's pretty obvious we attack with everything, right? The only blocker he really has yep. is Daekwondur. He has no real blockers for this. So like, with Valfist and Glimpse, you sorta only want to answer with those cards. Yeah. And that is the most important thing that I always talk about when playing Daekwondur. Because those cards are very important and very crucial for them to proceed. If they deny them, it's a big issue. As long as uh, it's very important to actually draw cards with Glimpse because our deck has a lot of okay, a yeah. lot of <laughs> low mana cost blockers and units, and Glimpse is the only card that draws us cards in this deck, so it's very crucial that we actually get to draw cards with our Glimpse. So always I use Valfeast and um, Glimpse. When the opponent, either one, cannot answer it, like for example, if he has zero mana, then we can play Glimpse and Valfeast and not care because he has zero mana, he cannot answer, or one mana. Um, the second time when we play Glimpse or Valfeast is if he plays something, like for example, if he Glimpses and we can Valfeast in response, so only as a response to. The third situation when we play one of these two cards is when there's nothing else left to play. Or for example, when we have like Glimpse and one more card and we cannot play that card and we're basically Glimpse because we really have to draw cards, even if he has mana to respond, but we really have to draw cards. So Glimpse and Valfeast, I literally never use um, in a situation where the opponent can respond and when it's not something that we use. I only use it as proactively. And it's something that really improves games of players that sometimes play it incorrectly. What do we keep this time? Um, I think we kick 
Bark Beast. I would probably keep everything else. Maybe kick Callista, but since we're attacking on three, it might be nice to keep. I don't think they have any three drops. Did do they? I don't know what deck that is. I think I would just yeah kick Bark Beast. I agree. It's a great curve. One, two, three. Oh, we got Glimpse. That's pretty nice. One, <laughs> one. So I definitely agree. Elise is an amazing two drop, even when it's not our turn to attack. We still can attack on turn three with Elise. Oh, we oh. got another. Oh, what is this? We're just copying cards today. Okay. The only consideration now is. Oh, he played Hide Gun, okay. That's okay, because you have another release. Yeah, this is... fine. You can't block it. It's fearsome anyway. True. What do you... what do we do now? I think I would Callista. Why? To threaten more damage, and... We have two fearsome units, so I don't... Think he can block them both, anyways. Okay, I mean your your reasoning is sort of correct. Like he, we do play Kalista, but your reasoning is not fully correct. The reasoning is not we have here some and he cannot block them. The reasoning is we have two one HP units, and he has make a rain in that deck. If we attack with this, it summons another spotling. They're all one HP. He can just make a rain, and we are not in a good situation. So Kalista is. Direct play, the correct play because he can evolve, uh, he, he can make a rain. But now the make a rain doesn't really do much. It can only kill Elise. And he plays wow. make a rain. It still does it. Yeah, of course, it's still a solid play. But do you know why he played make a rain right now? He would take too much damage, right? And then it would summon yeah. another spiderling. It also creates another spiling, that's also true. And another consideration we have to make because of this is that he might uh, have the uh, Yonk dude, the Black Market Merchant, because he has two mana. If it hits face, he can play the Butcher, uh, the Merchant. So we attack with the spiling first, and the 0 0.001 chance that he actually blocks it, because then Kalesta levels up. But he's obviously not going to block, but we still attack as if he's out of this world and actually blocks. Monkey Idol. Um. Oh wow, a new follower. Thank I you. Think I have this. <laughs> Just to pass back priority to see if he does anything first, and then Bark Beast. It could be correct. Um. 3 mana doesn't really threaten anything, the worst he can do is like make a rain to kill it, but then Callista was up so he's obviously not gonna do that. He could have Parley, which just kills something also levels up, so he doesn't want to do that either. So I feel like it's correct to develop here and that's it, because he doesn't really have anything here. Except for stealing cards, but that's... Oh. You, well, you have to pass it, because he has to do something now, right? Why would he waste the warning shot if he's not going to do anything? Maybe to level them up, but... It's That's... it's weird, but... But it's we still want to develop. He's He just so he used it to level up. I guess he just used it to level up, I don't know. It's very That's... weird. That's so weird. Just to level up, I, I don't know. It's... I think that's a bad play. I agree with that. I definitely agree with that. That's a weird play. We could play Crocolith here potentially. Because it yeah, levels up Callista. Like, we could. <laughs> uh, this is just a joke. We could Valfeast our own unit so he responds with something that we glimpse, but that's also just. <laughs> this is just a joke. Big brain. Big brain, bro. So, this seems like a good play. He does have a blocker for the Crocolith, which is these annoying units. But it still levels up. Or Callista makes the Bark Beast 3-3. Yeah. 
and our other two cards don't really make sense here. Like Wild Feast could be okay-ish, we remove a blocker, but he's just gonna play another unit that's a blocker, so it's meh. So what I do we attack with? Full attack. Full? Yeah, because he can only block, he's probably gonna block at least with the 3-3, three, three, no, or he's gonna trade three, it with the, mm -hmm. or he's gonna trade it with the Bark. And if he does that, then nothing can block the two fearsomes. And then he True. has to block the Crocolith, and he's gonna be taking spider damage no matter what. So True. yeah, I think we just full attack. So with everything? Yeah. Okay, spider not, because we summon two units. Oh yeah, 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 not spider. Um, but I do agree with attacking pretty much everything, because of the fact that like, the 3-3 three, three will most likely block Elise. Because Elise is annoying. Oh. Wow. Does he not know what it does? I, oh, he's just trying to save damage, I think. I guess he's saving from the most damage possible. I was expecting him to try to kill Elise. Oh, okay, never mind. He he is smart, it's okay. Seems okay. Oh, oh, yikes. Carved from the savage code. I mean, Ooh, that's not good. It's pretty obvious what we do here, right? Vile? Or pass? You don't want to do anything, right? What do we do while he's done? Or you can atrocity the Sejuani, but I think we just pass and wait for him to do something. Wait, wait. Why would atrocity? Wait, no, wait, you just. Oh, you just lethal. What? I mean, yeah. <laughs> I didn't see lethal. Yeah. Alright. He has three mana, he has no healing with Fred Fred or Beltwater, not in that deck. There's no reason yeah. not to go. Just... <laughs> you just have lethal. Yeah. I didn't even see that. He has no answer for that. If he would have frozen the Crocolith, then we wouldn't have lethal, but he wouldn't have get value, so he went for Callista. But that makes us just kill him. Seems good. Oh my god, look into the Discord voice channels. There's four people in the first voice channel, three people in the second one, five people in the third, three in the fifth. <laughs> All the channels. I think you need to make more. <laughs> need to make more. <laughs> okay. We're not attacking on turn 3. So Caretaker sort of seems bad. But do you think you would keep it or not? No, I only keep it if I have a combo. Or it's just a brick. But we do have Aristocrat though. So we can still kill him and get Caretaker. It would be turn 4 though. I think I would just aggressive flea mulligan here. Full mulligan, even aristocrat? No, uh, no, no, no. Keep aristocrat mulligan. The other. That's right. what I would do. I think that caretaker in any other matchup, I would not keep it. But in this matchup versus Demacia, I actually want to keep it. As uh -huh. Especially if it's Lucian Misfortune. Because Lucian Misfortune version of the Masia Belchwater has a lot of lower drop units. So like, Caretaker is a great way to board clear. Especially when he has this version of the Masia. So I do not agree with removing Caretaker. Yeah, makes sense. You can Caretaker for Lucian. I'll write my own story. I think we just pass here, and then we can... Callista Haunted Relic, maybe. Hmm. It does level so we, Callista, yeah, that's we can true. Bank the mana. And he's gonna be at 3 mana plus 1 spell mana. So the best thing he can do is a 2 mana drop. Plus... Um, uh, single combat, so it doesn't kill Callista. So he can only play like a 3 drop 
so he can have no counter to our Callista leveling up. If we would play Valtis now, it would potentially kill the tracker. But if he has the one mana, give tough two allies this round, it it would be a waste of a Valtis. And then we would not be able to play Callista. But now things have changed. I think that playing Valtis here is definitely the correct play. He has no way to counter it. We kill a tracker that he can we maybe we cannot kill next turn. It also gives us a charm blocker, so I feel like this is correct right now. I feel like the value of leveling up Callista is lower than the value of actually using Maltese. Yeah, because we don't have anything that's dead. Because his open attack now is useless. So he has to develop. And him developing means that we can develop as well. So we can actually Callista, play Callista. Right? So when yeah. he opens attack, we can kill Warchef without him able to do anything about it. Or we can just put Bard Beast, so if he attacks, we get a 3-3. Three, three. But I feel like Callista is definitely the better play here. Because it kills the Warchef for free, pretty much. A real battle? And he has no cards to do one damage to Callista. Make it rain would be like... I, I really would not expect to make it rain. So he literally never attacks. He's playing the Masa and he's not attacking. And that feels amazing for us. Hmm. We have options now. What do you yeah. what do you feel like you would do here? I think I would bark beast into caretakering the spiderling. Hmm. Or I could Crocolith, but... Crocolith makes that he really wants to actually defend the Crocolith. And it's awkward for him. The good thing is, if he can somehow kill it, Callista brings him back. But Bark Beast, I feel like is the correct play here. Because even yeah. if he does something crazy, we can level him up. I mean level him up, getting to 3-3. But he's not gonna do that. And now he has yeah. no mana, he has nothing. So, this seems amazing. Callista will level up. If we can clear two units, unless he has the one mana spell to give them tough. But for us, the current situation is looking pretty good. Um, Wouldn't you put the ranger or the whatever on the right? Because it's fearsome, so he can't block. Yeah, so this way he cannot block this. Yeah. And it makes that our Bark Beast can actually attack here. Because trading into these two seems good. Mm. The only consideration is do we attack with everything or not? Because currently he might not block anything, and this is what's gonna happen. No, if I we think put. We can't attack with everything. Yeah. I mean, these two just trade negatively, so I guess this is. This is good enough. Yeah, that gives us a target for Crocolith if if we need it. Oh what? Oh he's giving them tough this round. Okay. Still seems okay. To be honest. Yeah. Okay. Misfortune. Misfortune is pretty annoying here because we literally do not have a blocker for her. Because Bark Beast just dies, the other two units just die, and defending with Callista means Callista dies. So we're definitely don't want to block her. I think so just Bark Beast, right? Or no. I feel like Crocolith is good here because. It makes that yeah. he doesn't want to attack with Misfortune. So I feel like... And wouldn't Haunted what? Relic first? No, no, you don't have mana. We don't have mana. Yeah. 
We could Haunted Relic and that's it. And just defend with the Haunted Relic 1 drops, 1 1s, tokens or whatever. But I would only use it if we had like Day Quintur. Because if we have a Day Quintur, I would be like, oh, I play this day next turn, I play Day Quintur. But since we don't have Day Quintur in hand, this way he doesn't defend with Misfortune. The Crocolith can kill whatever we want. Seems good, you know? So, I think, like, we just defend as much damage as we can here with the 1-1, one and, one, and we kill the Badge Bear. Pretty simple, right? Yeah. If we defend with this, it doesn't do anything. We stop 2 damage, but... It just dies. Yeah. So this seems good. What is he considering? He has only 2 mana. Like, single combat, I guess? Yeah, I guess single combat, maybe. Like, if he single combats the Badge Bear, he can do 3 damage to Callista, but... I don't see the value in that. Or killing the Bog Beast, I guess. No, never mind. Considering that he actually was thinking so long, he could kill the Bog Beast if we play it, but... I just pass. I think passing is fine. We do not need to develop anyway, so we can... Oh wow. Ooh. That's solid. What would you do here? I think I would... Bark Beast or Open Attack. Okay. Probably Bark Beast and put on the right. The thing is, if you play Bog Beast, he can develop something like Lucian and whatever we kill, Lucian gets level up ticks or whatever. And Bog Beast, we're not gonna attack with it anyways. Like, we could attack with it, but the uh, thing that he puts new goes right of Bog Beast. So I feel like open attacking seems like better value here. Okay. Callista, he cannot defend. He's dealing 5 damage. His units are pretty much dying here for amazing value for us. He We kill 3 units while we literally use lose 1 unit. Makes sense, right? Yeah. Oh. Good thing you didn't develop yeah if we develop with bog beast it would literally just not help us at all it would be so awkward but yeah what would you now pick you here now? Bark beast. i think i would bark beast now i agree he's only two mana he doesn't really have anything and pretty much it's obvious that we want to kill her right now he, can single combat. he could single combat to kill our crocolith but if he has it he but has it yeah. and his open attack here is useless so he has to develop or else Sentra dies to crocolith which is the worst thing ever so he has to develop first and then we can react to what he's gonna play That's pretty gay. <laughs> <laughs> what do we do? I think I just Omen Hawk. Yeah, it pretty much passes the turn and see if he's gonna do anything. Oh, wow. He actually attacked. I mean, this is hilarious. We take 7 damage, but we kill Sentria. Seems good. I mean, I will not ask you what do we do here because this is like... Oh, oh, wow. That's unlucky. I mean, even... Like, we could consider blocking with Callista, but I don't feel like blocking with Callista would be really a good consideration. Like... Yeah. I feel like we had nothing to do that 
defends us from doing this. Like, if we wild feast also, it's gonna drop them to 1 HP, so we really cannot do anything against this. It is what it is. We pass. That's all. Okay. Now you hope you get an endure. We pretty much insta win with it. Mm -hmm. What now? Mm, I think a haunted relic and then attack. Why haunted relic? Uh, he only has two cards. I don't know what he can have to stop free damage. And then if we draw an endure. Maybe we can win, but we might want to just pass because it's not really much to do. You're and really not. You're really not considering water. Fury of the North. You're really not looking at this cut because if we attack here, he might want to block against four damage, and by normal logic, he's gonna be like, "Wait, I can block this Omen Hawk. He cannot do five damage to me. How is he gonna do five damage? We actually have five damage." Hmm. Like, we could consider doing this, which is 7 damage, but we're playing a deck that has no direct damage. We either get a Trusty, or we either get Daekwondur. If we get either of those two, I mean, we need to get Daekwondur pretty much to win. So this is 100% the play that we want to do. Okay. The only question is, we might want to attack first and then deal to 3 damage and then do Valfis later on if he has Benjamin which I really don't think he has it's better to play this now because if we pass he could play Benjamin and it goes to HP and it puts us at a really awkward spot you know yeah. which is a low chance but we wanna not be in that chance Okay, Senna alone. Oh, okay, GG. There we go. That's pretty obvious. There's nothing he can do. Yeah. It's GG. And he has Bannerman. I don't know if it was the top deck or not, but... The Bannerman... If we would have not Valfies at the start... He could have played it then, and it would be really problematic. Oh, he attacks with everything. So block the Senna and then just block the other two. And then I mean, we could block this as turn. well. We could block this as well if we really want to. Um, I don't feel like anything of this matters, but if we're thinking about... If we would not have Daekwondur, this is how I would block. Because taking one or one more damage doesn't really matter for us. Because he doesn't have direct damage and he has zero cards. Um, we could have played Haunted Relic first. Uh, he, yeah. They would jump long and they, then we play Daekwondur. But I feel like at this point, where he has no cards, it really doesn't matter. Usually we would want we to Haunted win. Relic first. But we just went with Daekwondur. It really does matter. But usually I just block the 1-1 one, one here. So the 3-3, three, three, when attacking, blocks, goes into either of these and just kills it. But being too big brain here right now doesn't make sense considering that we just play the Aquindur and we instantly win the game. The only card that he could have is Purify, which I don't think that the version of the deck runs it. And um, yeah. Are you kidding me, dude? <laughs> oh, yay, another mirror. This is so stupid, dude. Another mirror matchup. Okay. Um, Butcher, Bark Beast? I think, I think I would kick Butcher and kick Bark Beast, too, I think. Mm, I agree with that. We want to get a one drop, the 1 1 yeah. Aristocrat or something else.
Obvious Elise play. Block the spider lane. Yeah. Pretty much. We could play this, but. Last turn. So, we could have played this. And we did have, like, Sentry and Glimpse or something. But. Considering he has 4 mana, we have 4 mana, we could play Fury of the North. If he actually plays Fury of the North on his lease. But it keeps it at 1 HP, never mind. Nothing happens here. Um, so yeah, li nothing is happening here. There's just gonna be a stupid matchup where nothing is gonna happen. Somebody's gonna play yeah. Daekwon Dior and they instantly win. <laughs> Or someone's gonna play Neverglade. Oh boy. Callista. Uh, what do we do? Tell me, bro. Maybe Sentry? Or Spider? Wait, is Bark Beast 2 2? No. No, we didn't have a Omen Hook. Hmm. I think I would just sentry here. Hmm. Okay, I agree with the sentry, but what are we gonna do next? Then tell me. If we if we keep it like this, well, you have to understand what's happening with the board. He's all gonna open attack. We have zero blockers because this is fearsome. This is fearsome. He's gonna do six damage with us. Create a one one spider. So if we block with the sentry, we lose the sentry. If we block the with the Elise. He might Vile Feast it, and that's not good, okay? Okay. Next turn, we have four mana. So we can actually... So we can theory? We can develop here with the one ones. And he's just going to think, okay, well, he played the one ones, So he can have a blocker for the least one one instead of blocking with our Elise and then Vile Feast kills it instead of Sentry. So... Sentry dies doesn't give that much value, maybe. If we would play Bark Beast now, he would maybe consider open attacking but Val Feasting the Bark Beast or such, and we would not have mana for Glimpse as well. Because what is happening this turn is he's gonna open attack. That is very likely chance that he's going to open attack, because he looks at our board and sees like, oh, he at least might flip if I kill one of the spot oh, sentry or he puts a spotling, but that is not a high chance in this deck anymore, in Day Hunter, because people don't really play for this flip. But what's going to happen is, hey, I'm dealing five, six damage to him. He probably does have an answer. We do. We have Fury of the North, and that's what we're basically aiming for right now so as i said he open attacks which is pretty standard pretty obvious to track so we play fury to kill callista and our spotling yeah. also survives we don't really care about that but he survives <laughs> yes. the only consideration that we actually have is blocking with the spotling or blocking with the sentry and I feel like Sentry is the correct play here, because drawing a card could be really essential here, considering we only have four cards, and two of them are not playable. <laughs> yeah, we cannot play clips. Like, at, like we don't have much of choices. Um, yeah, Omen. Uh, right? Usually I would be like, yeah, sure, Omen Cock. Uh, no, he has five mana. If he loses 3 mana and only has Kalis, at least on the board, we're okay with that. We're, we would rather not play Omen Hawk, in my opinion. This is something that is might not be correct advice, in my, maybe not. But in my opinion, if he has 5 mana and he passes back, he loses 3 mana, uh, two ma he loses 2 mana and he has nothing on the board, nothing that threatens us, nothing that pressures us. So I feel like... Okay, he played Keeper. Okay, I'm not good. I'm now gonna play Omen Hawk. But 
before he played Keeper, I was just like, I'm fine with this. Valfeast? So that means he has two Valfeast, right? Why else would he do that? Uh, he has Veil. That is the only thing I see here. He definitely must have Veil. Because it kills everything on our board. But and you can Arc Beast, right? I... Because if he Wails, you can glimpse one of your units. And we can wait to get a 3-3 three, three Bog Beast. True. Yeah. But what's that going to do? We're going to have a 3-3 three, three Bog Beast that trades into the Spotling, becomes a 3-1. It doesn't, it doesn't really feel good, does it? So you just it, open attack? Yeah, like we could play Butcher here, which could survive stuff, but I'm okay. I'm actually okay with him using Riddering Veil, uh, because it also gives us another Spotling that dies, and not a lot yes. of people play Veil, which is also Double true. Wild. Also, it's pretty true that not a lot of people play Veil, which is pretty interesting, pretty good. But maybe this guy plays, so it's better to still try to counter play it. Oh, this is pretty good. We got the Echondur. Okay, let's see what happens. Omen Hawk. So, Bark Beast, right? You don't have anything else. Pretty much, yeah. Or you can buy, yeah. yeah. Because Bark Beast is correct, because we have Glimpse, we have Wild Feast, we have Butcher to go along with that. Uh, at our current state, he might open attack with these two, and this is a loot. Uh, fearsome, we can unblock it. So, do you we think we still want to play? Next round. But, yeah, I think I would still play. We could. Wow, he's next to him. That's true. But, but I feel like Butcher could be... Yeah, maybe. Butcher's better because it denies him a spider. Or a spiderling. If it, he open attacks, he gets one more spiderling. And Ellie's dies as well. If we throw Keeper, Butcher would feel bad. But I feel like, I feel like this could be a good play. Because then attack, open attacking for him doesn't seem good here. So I feel like playing Butcher is good to do here. It would double Wild Feast. That's pretty, pretty good. Oh, that sucks. Oh, uh, here we go. That's not good. <sighs> hmm. What is your idea now? Because if we pass him, we'll, maybe we'll pass because we have 8 mana. I think he just vile feast the Elise, or he's gonna open attack and get a spiderling. True. Because One... he wants stuff to die now. It's never glade. The another good thing, if he glimpses because he has only three cards, we have another vile feast, so we can counter his glimpse. Usually, usually I would not play vile feast like that, but Oof. playing it here seems okay. Oh wow. Uh... Oh, that's that's a big yikes. Huh. He already used two vile feasts, so I think you could glimpse actually, like glimpse one of your spiderlings, just for the draw. Right now. Yeah, because unless he has three vile feasts in his hand, there's no way. Okay, he has I'm gonna one, I'm gonna give some two. I'm gonna give some crazy ideas. First idea. Atrocity Haron Butcher to kill the Collector to deny this dealing all the damage. That's just a crazy idea, and we're not going to do that. I'm just talking about ideas. <laughs> Second idea is pass, play Dayquindur. I don't think that's the correct play either, because it's only an 8-8. We want him to be a little bit bigger. And the third idea would be glimpsing the Spiderling there, which I also don't feel like it's a good idea. I feel like passing here could be good because he's not attacking with the keeper, he's not attacking with all of the one ones, which he wants to do. So we wait until he actually does that, put this here, and now that will do the glimpse. Make sense? Yeah. And I feel like losing the spiraling is good here because we have a bigger deck when you're done. And. I don't know if we block with these because 
I mean, we currently go to 11. I think it's correct to reduce the damage here. I think it's correct. <laughs> Double keeper. Okay, they heard there's 10 10. It's okay now. Not the best. Hmm. More choices. Mm. I think his endure is bigger though, right? Because he had. Maybe, relic. yeah. Because of relic and stuff, yeah. Relic is already endure plus 3 3. Yeah, endure might not be the correct play here. I'm going to do... S okay, what would you do? Like Callista or Keeper or something? Yeah. Yeah, probably Callista. He has no blocker for Callista, but I feel like if he plays Endure... If we play Callista and he plays Endure, we're in a really bad spot. So, this is going to be pretty interesting and pretty weird, but I feel like this could be the correct play. Because what we're essentially doing here... Is one passing our turn, two killing our unit to get a bigger take when you're, and now if he plays something that is more than three mana, there you go. Exactly. So this is why I did now. Um, did do you understand yeah. what I did? Yes. I you totally. I got a bigger take when you're. I literally countered him at this moment, and I feel like. Full swing, right? I feel like that what we did was definitely correct. Um. Yeah, if we play attack with Daehundur, I don't think he's gonna block with Omen Hulk and take 10 damage or just take 11 damage because we're trusty, we just win. So he has to block with Daehundur. It's like 90% sure that he's gonna block with it. And whatever we attack with, so that's the other cards, whatever he blocks with is a positive trade for us, so we full swing and potentially win with the trusty next turn. <laughs> Unless he can do two damage to it somehow. Oh, I should attack with Daekwondir last. I'm sorry, my bad. I wasn't thinking enough. I don't think sometimes. Because the healing from the first unit dying would not heal him, so he would be probably at 12 HP right now. Oh, wow. Oh, that's pretty crazy, dude. Uh, you want to keep... I think you just... Curse Keeper, because you have 6 mana. Exactly. Because then we get to keep mana for a second Equador, or for Atrocity. Yeah. Okay, he has only one card left. He He's tapped under anything, right? He can't kill you. So you can play Callista, and he can't attack. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, he's, he's not attacking with this anyways. But yeah, I think we don't need to play Dekwondur or Trusty right now. A Trusty doesn't kill him, and Dekwondur isn't we as... can't do that. You want to level up? Wait, what? Oh. Oh, wow. He's giving you a free level up? Um, no, because only two of our units die here. Yeah, oh yeah. I don't think we can kill three units here. Um, we could kill Daekwondur, but that's not... That's... That's no, troll. That's not worth it. Valfi is the 4 1 or something? Or Glimpse something? There's no way he has Valfi. Yeah. That's okay. Wow. Alright. That's fine. This seems good.
second endure? Because he can still atrocity, right? Pretty and much. If he doesn't have an endure, he just loses. Yeah, pretty much. If he does have endure, we just open attack with everything we win. Do we pass? Yeah, it's okay. You need to save the mana. So you can lethal him if he does anything else. So you're just okay and then open attack. So like, the thing is, with Glimpse, he still passes his turn, so it's my turn next. So whatever he draws, if it's not a spell, he cannot even play it. Like one funny yeah. thing, we could have trusted the 1-1 one into his 1-1 one one so he doesn't draw cards. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't draw cards, and we get a 4-4, and we get a leveled up Callista, which could be solid, but passing, I think win. passing seems okay, yeah. because just with the Deho Endure, we can literally just endure, attack with Deho Endure and Atrocity, and we still win the game. So yeah. So yeah, we don't, <laughs> we're not going to do crazy plays like that, we're just going to attack with Endure and Atrocity it, and win the game. Currently, he falls into 1 HP. <laughs> now it's his turn. And if he does anything, yeah, you can lethal him. Because he can. I mean, it's pretty obvious. I was just. I always talk about options. Sometimes I talk about crazy options, crazy ideas that are never gonna happen, but... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I feel like this version is pretty good into Mirror. Crocolith is pretty clutch. Crocolith is pretty interesting, to be honest. Um, I'm still... <laughs> the one only hook one butcher is pretty funny to me, to be honest. Um, I don't think there's enough targets to butcher, like two of or three of. It's just pretty pretty much if you're playing the double crocolith that you play. Yeah. Then yeah, you want to crocolith the keeper or the sentry or the one ones, considering you also have caretaker, which is also killing something. You yeah. don't have too many targets for butcher. That is true. But keeping the possibility of Butcher plus Keeper is pretty good for turn 2. It's pretty crazy turn 2 sometimes. But, I don't know. Having one of Omnihawk and one of Butcher seems pretty weird in my opinion. <laughs> Triple Bark Beast seems pretty weird. Like, I would, to be honest, I would rather have Triple Aristocrat to have a stronger turn 1. Because it was too often. That what happened is that turn one, we yeah, had we had Bark Beast, we discarded it, and then we have no turn one. And Aristocrat is two one one units, which is great for Deku Endure. So for this deck, I would I would add a third Aristocrat. If you really want to yeah, keep one do. Butcher, one Omen Hawk. If you really want to run you. this version, this is fine. But at least go for a third Aristocrat. I don't feel like Bark Beast having three of Bark Beast. If you don't have three of Aristocrat. Or another one drop or something that is I don't know. I feel like yeah. triple or script could be better. I was thinking of two two two. So two Bark Beast, two hapless, two Omen Hawk. <laughs> the ratio is kinda weird. But... It's kinda weird, but I either way I think everything I do is kinda weird with three one drops. Hmm. It's pretty interesting, but yeah, I've been trying to go around Deku Endure different versions, and Deku Endure is pretty interesting what you can do with it. Um, but yeah, um, I always like to consider all the options that are possible at any certain point of time, but besides that, you have to sometimes focus on not the ideas, the stupid, crazy ideas that I had, what could we do this then? But you should focus on what you're doing next turn. Because there were some scenarios where 
you did the correct play, but you did not know why you did cor the correct play. Because you did not think what you're going to do next turn. True. You were just thinking, oh, this turn I'm going to do this, because this turn this is the correct play. True, that could be great. But if if this turn I could play this, which is the correct play, but then next turn I might not have anything to play, or I might have something to play, but that will be worse than me playing something differently this turn so next turn i can have more options or more things that i can do or just a better play next turn so when we're i don't know one advice i would say like just try to think of what's happening next turn more than focusing only on the current turn second thing is like just um in the matchups which we did today, we really did not have a lot of variety. We literally, what? Two mirrors. We played mostly into mirror only. So we did not have a lot of different scenarios happening. Because if you play versus the same deck, there's not going to be a lot of variety as much as happens when you're playing versus different decks, different regions and stuff like that. So unfortunately, I could not give you too much advice on that because we only had the games that we had and I do not have the time to go for more games and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, uh, one sort of advice I always give to people if they are really focused on laddering, especially now when it's the end of the season, so yeah, keep on playing this deck. Put the third aristocrat. Focus what's gonna happen next turn. At the same time, take a little bit more time into your turn so you can consider more things. Because if you consider more options and more things that might happen and what you should mulligan and stuff like that, there's a, a little bit of a higher chance you might win this game instead of losing. And for example, taking one extra minute to win a game instead of potentially maybe losing could be a lot more uh, time consumption into uh, value than actually like not ex taking that extra minute to consider things and potentially lose. Because then you have to win another game to even come back when you started and then you have to go for another game after, the, after that. So just taking a little bit more time is definitely something that people should do if they're really pushing for that rank at the end of the season, which is happening now. And one more thing is this uh, this website that I really love. Um, I even sometimes use it at the tournament, which is this one that I'm going to post in the chat. And I'm going to give it to you. It's just a website for cards. That's literally it. You open it up. You have it on your second screen. Uh, you do have two screens? No, I have uh, one screen, but I can see it. Okay. I just all tab. Yeah, but you can sometimes all tap. Trust me, this this site is great. You click on the regions that the opponent is playing. So you literally can click on spells. At, and then at any point of time when you're playing your game, you see, oh, the opponent has three mana. What could he have? You click on the regions he has, spells. You know all the spells. You can anticipate what the opponent might do. It's the new version of anticipating what the opponent might do. If you're a better player, you will pretty much know in your head what cards he might have. You can do a better card reading, but this website just helps you with that without knowing the cards, without knowing the matchup, with not knowing all those things. You can just have it open and you can sort of anticipate it. Try it out for a few games. It might save you a game okay yeah okay. Mm, but yeah so the games were fun do you have any questions no i think i'm good thank you thank you for doing this coaching thing yeah no problem man if you have any question just uh let me know bro okay you can always message me you can always tag me feel free to tag me because then i can 100 percent see your message but yeah of course if there's nothing else, that should be it for today. Uh, I hope you have a nice rest of your night and 
too. See you around. See ya. Thank you. Yeah. Bye-bye. Okay.